Hello, my dear friends. This will be my last Shabbos serving, at least on official capacity as the Rabbi of Congregation of Torah. I will be delivering a special drasha at the Hashkama Minyan uh, before lining and at the uh, upstairs Minyan approximately 5 to 11. And my uh, final retirement date will be next Thursday. It will be my last day, August 31st. Now, I've been asked by dozens of people, literally, are you excited? I, I could, can, are you finding it hard to wait? Are you counting down the days? Are you tearing them off on a, on a calendar? I once had a, uh, an English teacher, his name was Mr. Ramft, and we studied Shakespeare and we had these pocket Shakespeare's. So it was a fellow in my class who did not enjoy reading, learning Shakespeare. So as we were turning the pages, he would take the, it was a paperback, he would take the page and he would tear it out. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ram was so angry at him. He says, Chaim, what are you doing? Why are you tearing out the pages? So Chaim didn't tell him, but, you know, goodbye and good riddance. Who, who needs this? So they want to know, am I tearing the, pa the pages off my, my calendar as I'm about to embark uh, on, on a new life, leaving the shul? So I want to answer that question because I think it's an important question and my response is, is as important as well. My answer is, Chazal say that when the Jewish people left Har Sinai, after they received the Torah in Har Sinai, so the Torah says in Baha'u'llah, in Vayisu mehar Hashem They traveled from the mountain of Hashem three days, and then they began to complain that they didn't have uh, meat to eat, and then like the month. But they traveled for three days, so the Chazal had trouble. Why did they have to tell me they traveled? Mehar Hashem, they traveled from, from the mountain of Hashem. Should have just, we know they were at the mountains, so they traveled for three days. So Chazal say, they traveled, they so atzma mehar Hashem. They separated themselves from the mountain of Hashem. They, they de departed from the mountain of Hashem because Chazal give them mashal. They say it's like a tinek haberech me base safer. It's like a child that when the, the bell rings, for, for the end of the school day, whew, they're out of there. They can't wait to get out. And they, they run away. They don't just leave the school. They, don't, they certainly don't leave with a heavy heart. They're so excited. They, the kids are running. And, and the same thing is, is with recess. Or, you know, kids, when, uh, if you remember, when we were children, we couldn't wait for a vacation, summer vacation. Wow, the whole year we were counting the days for the summer vacation. And then finally, a month before, we said, it's 30 days to summer vacation. And then for one week, and then we, we didn't even know how many hours were left until the summer vacation. So that's how the Jewish people were. They, they, um, they were like a child running away from school. Why did they do that? So Ramban says, because they were afraid that maybe God would impose on them more mitzvahs. As it, they had 613 mitzvahs to deal with. Now maybe they'll stay longer. <laughs> God will come up with some more ideas. And so they ran away. Brother Ramban says, Besimcha. They were so happy. They were so excited. And that was considered to be a terrible avera. In fact, in the, right after that pasuk, there's a nun hafucha. This is right before it says, Vahib and Aaron. And Chazal say, the, the nun, nun is upside down. For whatever reason, it's the letter Nun, but Nun upside down represents the fact that there was a period of time of tragedy because they ran away from Har Sinai. They should have, they should have left reluctantly that they had the revelation of a Kaddish Baruch Instead, they were Ketina Kabareach Mavesa Sefer. So I want to share with you my feelings, my, the response to that question that everybody's asking me. Are you excited? No, I'm not excited. Am I sad? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Am, am I excited? No, why, am I, why should I be excited? This has been the most wonderful position in the world. I have a chance to, to assist people, to do chesed 24-7, even on Shabbos. I can do chesed all day long. I do, it's, a, it's a chesed job. That's what the job is. What, what job could be better than that, to have the opportunity? What tremendous honor and kavod to be able to serve as the rabbi of congregation or Torah. So I, I am not guilty. If you're, you, my answer to your question is, am, am I excited? No, chas v'shalom. Because then I would be a tina kabarech, mi be safer. It would mean that I'm running away from the position. Why should I run away from the position? It's such a wonderful job. It's not a job. I'm going to talk about that in a minute also. It's such a wonderful position. I'm not a, a tina kabarech. So you'll say to me, are you, are you sad? 
So I'm not sad either because I don't consider this the end of my tenure. And that's just, not just because I'm the rabbi emeritus, but because being a rabbi is a relationship and you establish the relationship as the years go on, the relationship becomes more and more profound. I never entertained the possibility of taking another position. The many rabbis, they had this shul and then that shul for, for reasons that are understandable, but I never w w would have wanted to do that. Why? Because Rabbanus is a relationship. It's, it's the relationship between the rabbi and the congregant. It's a relationship of, of friendship, of, of becoming chaverim. And the longer you, you know somebody, the more profound the relationship. And it, it just like you don't take trees. You plant the tree and you let it grow. You don't pull it out after five years and plant it someplace else. It's bad for the tree. A relationship needs to continue to grow. So it's, I, I, as I am leaving the official title of being the rabbi, I'm not severing the relationship. I tell everybody, the only thing that's gonna change is my seat. Instead of sitting up front, I'm gonna sit down below. I'm still gonna be available for people. I'll be happy to answer questions or, or if people wanna to talk to me about different issues. I'm, I'm available all the time. So I'm not, I'm not, Ramad says when they left Har Sinai, I was besimcha. I'm not besimcha, I'm not excited. I'm not looking forward. It is true that that being a rabbi is a great deal of pressure, as in many jobs. There's a lot of pressure and a lot of things to take care of, and a great deal of responsibility. But chas v'shalom, I'm not a tine kabarech and base safer, because this was the, the most special position that I could have imagined to have in, in, in my lifetime, is, is to be the rav of a congregation. I, I learned, you know, my rabbi in Rabbanus was my father, as a chronicle of Racha. And I've shared with you many things that I've learned from my father. My father, among everything else, my father taught me how to be a rabbi because my father was a, was a practicing rabbi for 25 years in Young Israel Forest Hills. My father intuitively knew how to be a rabbi. He didn't have a rabbi. My grandfather was not a rabbi. I think going back, maybe my great grand, my great grandfather was a rabbi. But my father was not a rabbi. My grandfather was not a rabbi. My father though was a rabbi par excellence. And my father taught me both by example and by, after I became a rabbi, by discussions that we had, my father taught me how to be a rabbi. So I, and I've shared with you many things that I, that, I, that I observed that my father did. So I wanna share with you one, one thing that my father did after he left his shul in Israel Forest Hills. My father and my mother, Aleh and Masham, they went to move to Eretz Yisrael shortly after they retired. Within a, a month, they moved to Arza Habira and Yushalayim. And, and my father never severed his relationship with the people. He continued to, re, to re, retain a close, he was, and he, it was, my father passed away about 35 years later after he left the shul. But throughout that time, my father had an enormously close relationship with the people of the shul. Even though he was no longer a paid rabbi and he wasn't, the, he, he, he wasn't even in the same country but he still felt a connection to the congregation. My father, every Rosh Hashanah, my father spent hours and hours composing a letter to the congregation. He didn't have to, but he did it because he felt that strong connection and he wanted to maintain it. So he wrote a personal letter to the entire congregation and he talked a message for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Narayim, and he gave a, a, a little synopsis of what's going on in the family and births and marriages, etc. And my father and my mother, they would sign every single letter. They sent out hundreds of letters. It was a very large congregation. And then they hand addressed every single, and after my mother passed away, after a few years, my father, you know, remarried. And his second wife was also a wonderful woman, Fanny. And together, my father and, and my mother and my father and Fanny, they hand addressed every single envelope. I don't know why they had to hand address it, I'm sure the Young Israel office could have printed out stickers with the addresses. I imagine they did it because they felt it was more personal. And, and, and on each letter they wrote, dear, they didn't have, it was, it was a standard letter, a boilerplate, but on the top of the letter they would write, dear Sam and Sarah. And then they would sign their names and then in the envelope they would address it as well. So why did my father do that after all? And he was doing that until my father at the end of his life had Parkinson's and, and even with the Parkinson's, he struggled to be able to send out those letters to the members of the Young Israel Forest Hills. Why? Because my father 
And this is what he taught me. Being a rabbi is not a job. Being a rabbi is a relationship. And when just because you move away, when your kids get married, it, they don't run away. It's not Tina Kabarech and Beis Sefer. They don't run away from the parents' house. The, and the parents don't say, goodbye, get rid of it. Oh, there's so much trouble taking care of you. You know, all of the crazy things that you did when you're growing up. I can't, I couldn't wait for you to leave. Nobody thinks that way because being a parent is a, is a special relationship and being a child is a relationship. And the, and, and the rabbi and the members of the congregation is a relationship. It's a relationship of of friendship and a relationship of, of closeness. And Fagin and I have been able to share in in, in, in so many simchas of members of the show. This month alone, we're attending 12 weddings in the period of, of, of 30 days. That's wonderful because it gives us an opportunity to share in, in, in the in the in the in the experiences of the family, in the simchas of the family. That's how you maintain a relationship. You share events with the family. So I'm not a tina kabareach mivesa sefer, and I I would just add to that is that it, this is a, a lesson as well in terms of our relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. We shouldn't leave when we finish doing a mitzvah. We shouldn't leave feeling that we're turning tina kabareach mivesa sefer like running a child running away. When you put away the sukkah, it should be feel. You shouldn't feel ah, oh, I'm so happy. I can go back into the house and and, and you take it apart and you put it away in the storage area. Baruch, Baruch Hashem, I'm finished. That would be terrible if you feel that way because that would be tina should be with pain of uh, 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 not with guilt but with with, with uh, of, of of pain that you have to put away the sukkah that it was so beautiful to be able to sit close to the shechina in the sukkah and now you have to put it away. I'll tell you how I feel every year Rosh Hashanah Yom The saddest moments of Yom Hashanah for me is when the shofar blows at the end of Ne'ilah because it's the, the Chazal say that when the shofar blows it means the Shechina it's a sign that the Shechina is departing and that's so sad that the Shechina is now going away. We've been so close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for so many days and now the Shechina is departing. Um, I'll make the point again I just said it before at the end of davening, it's not the right time to take off, the people take off their talesim and their kittel in the middle of Marav. That, 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 that communicates that I, I, I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to break the tiny. It's, okay, it's understandable people are hungry. But it should be with a heavy heart that a person is leaving the, so wait till the end of davening, then take off your talis and take off your kittel. It should be with a heavy heart that you're, that you're leaving. I don't have a heavy heart because I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm still living here. I, I'm, I'm still in the same house as I've been for the, for the last 20 years. And I'm still going to be sitting in, in the shul. I won't sit up front, but I'll see. I'll have a seat in the shul. I'll be, be, be in the shul regularly for the evening. So, and the, the Baruch Hashem, the relationship has been very, very special. And I thank everybody from the bottom of my heart that you gave me the opportunity. What a tremendous cover, what a schus. And what a wonderful experience to be able to serve as a rabbi of Congregation or Torah. I, well, I wish everybody a very wonderful and beautiful Shabbat Shalom.